Hello everyone, I'm Sadia Faruqi. I'm the co-author of this middle grade novel, A Place at the Table. Today I'm going to read just a page or two from this book. Let's get started. As the kids gather around my mother, I stare up, I start up my music again. Before I can look down at my drawing, I notice Elizabeth watching me, not in a mean way, more like she's curious. I hate people staring at me as if I've got a horn growing out of my forehead. I have to resist the urge to cross my eyes or make a face at her. It's not like we've ever officially met, even though we share Miss St. Emma's language arts class. Sometimes I see her in the halls, but Poplar Spring is so different from Ikra Academy, like a big noisy circus where all the performers know each other except me. I don't talk to anyone most days. I keep my head down and rush from one class to the other. I suddenly miss Rabia like a craving for that mint chutney mama used to make when I was little. I haven't seen her since school started. I notice that the edge of my tunic sleeve is wrinkled and I smooth it carefully. My eyes shift down at my drawing. The garden seems ugly now. Whose idea was it to draw a single rose in the center of all these white lilies? Oh yeah, mine. I feel someone's gaze on me. I sneak a peek, looking up at the kids gathered round the cooking island. Elizabeth again. She raises her right hand to her glasses and I notice she's wearing bracelets, her only jewelry. One has a Star of David charm. It glints in the fluorescent light, kitchen lights like it wants to be noticed. When she sees me looking back at her, she smiles a little. Ugh, the last thing I want is to be friendly right now, stuck in this hot kitchen with a bunch of rude kids making my mama nervous. I glare at Elizabeth until her smile slips and she looks away. Good. Message sent and received. Hi, my name is Laura Chauvin and I am the co-author of A Place at the Table. I'm going to read a scene in Elizabeth's voice. Sara snaps her book closed, but not before I see a swirling garden created in black ink, one red flower in the center. It's beautiful. If I could draw like that, I'd study animation when I grow up. But my hands are big and clumsy. I'm better at kneading dough than drawing. Sara slides her sketchbook into her backpack without saying another word. Conversation over, I think. I head to the table where Maddie is already sitting next to Stephanie. Stephanie's all right, I guess. People like her because she's always sharing samples of the cupcakes she bakes, but she'd rather watch America's Got Talent than Doctor Who. Maddie and I used to argue for hours about which actor was the best Doctor Who. A time-traveling do-gooder who clashes with monsters, saves Earth from aliens, and witnesses historical events like the destruction of Pompeii. How cool is that? Not cool enough for Maddie now that she's friends with Stephanie Tolson. Maddie's complaints about Mrs. Hamid's accent and the spicy food are annoying, but I put up with her because she's my best friend. When it's finally time to eat, everyone gets a ladle full of bright yellow rice and potatoes in a plastic bowl. I chew slowly savoring the flavors. They're so delicious that the noise in the room fades away for a second. How can such simple ingredients make my tongue feel like it's dancing with warmth and smoke? I take another bite and shoot Maddie a huge grin. And that's when she spits her rice into a napkin. My tongue is on fire, she tells everyone at the table. Sara drops her plastic fork with a clatter. All eyes turn to the end of the table, where she's sitting by herself. She treats everyone to a lethal scowl. This is why she has no friends.